It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. Because that's the bottom line. Because And so, goodbye. Mwah. <laughs> and good night. Bye. Settle! Because I'm better than you, and you know it. Yes, sir, man! What the rock is cooking? Now, welcome to Off the Mats with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the only wrestling talk show here on the World Wrestling Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Welcome to Off the Mat. I'm Alex Lowe's down in sunny Florida. With me up north, with me on the on the other screen is Lyle Gillen up north. How's it going, Lyle? Nothing much, man. Really excited to have a great show with you tonight or today. Definitely. It's going to be a great one. Stick of us here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get started, we have to do our house our housekeeping, and that is tell the fans where they can get in touch with us and follow us on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. So how you can follow us is uh, follow, follow the show at Off The Mat WWSRN, and also don't forget to follow us personally on our personal Twitters. At show, at show slows, Lyle OTM, and Josh Silverberg. And also follow the Worldwide Sports Radio Network on, on Twitter and Facebook, and make sure to follow our Facebook page. Also, please download the free, download the Worldwide Sports Radio Network app. It's absolutely free. You can get access to all of our show articles, our, our, our blogs, our, all the shows that we have on the network, because it's not just wrestling here. It is more, it's more than that. We have a lot of different variety of shows. There's down to the wire with speedy and arrow uh, down to the wire with speedy and arrow marks. There's below the mic. There's the weekend crunch with Josh Silverberg and arrow marks. There's the sports hit list. There's weapons, weapons hot and so much more. So you definitely want to check out those shows on the app. There are also there are also ways that you can connect with our show and that is to follow follow the network's follow all the network's social media. Also we, we I just created a website for the page. That is called offthematwwsrn.com. You can check out all the all the we can you can check out check out all of our different stuff on there. We have the show's page, different variety of stuff. So I highly recommend checking that out. So let's just bounce into the NXT takeover vengeance day results. So, so we had the first match was pretty interesting. We had Dakota Kai and Raquel, Raquel Gonzalez take on Ember moon and Shotzi Blackheart of the women's dusty roads, tag team classic finals. I thought that match was okay. There was, there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of fall away slams, different one on one uh, moves, and we saw we saw that the, the Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart were doing a fantastic job, but they weren't able to stay on uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Raquel Gonzalez, and they it, it was it took a lot of heavy artillery, and unfortunately, Raquel Gonzalez was able to help her team out and pick up the win. And there's Josh. I'm here. I'm here. Hey! So me and Lyle were talking. I just started talking about Dakota Kai and Roselle Gonzalez in their match against Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart for the mm -hmm. women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Final. I thought right. the match was okay. I figured that that there needed to be more back and forth, and there just wasn't a, there there just wasn't much going on in the match. But what I did like seeing was that they were focusing more on Raquel Gonzalez and putting her over in that match and mm -hmm. allowing her to take up the victory for her team. And Ember Moon and Gonzalez, they they were fantastic in that match as well. There was a lot that they threw oh, in, and in that match. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart, their match was fantastic against Dakota Kai and Raquel, Raquel 
Raquel Gonzalez. And I also did like their entrance, how they uh they kind of had a Valentine's Day theme to it. Theme to it. What were your thoughts on that, Lyle? What did you think of that? Um, I thought I don't think it was the right match to have open the show. I think they could have done something better. I would have preferred um MSK and Grizzly Young Vets would have started the show off to a much better um much. It would have started the show off better. I personally thought the match was okay when I first watched it. I liked it, and then as it went on, I, it, and as the days passed, it was, I just thought. It could have been way, way better. I think it was a little yeah, botchy, a little I, sloppy. I that wasn't it wasn't the, the best match. It wasn't the best match to start out with. It could have started out with what you said, MSK, Grizzled Young Veterans, or even the North American Championship match. Well, that's what uh, Triple H likes to do with his takeovers. He likes to start off with a tag team match. does it every time. Always and I that. think he Always. And I think it would have done um, a better service to the card having the bigger tag team match start off than the women's match. So for me, I I felt the match was very solid. I I, I didn't I, I didn't I understand what Lyle was saying in regards to you could you could have had the other tag team match open it up, but to me, I thought the match was fine opening up the show. I thought it was really good. First off, I think Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez are a really good dynamic duo together. Yeah, they really are. I think they really are awesome. When you kind of get the vibe, I mean, you've seen comparisons. People are saying Shawn Michaels and Diesel when you get that kind of vibe of it, where Dakota's like Shawn Michaels and Raquel is so big, she's like Diesel. So when you kind of look at that duo together, I think it's awesome. And I like the back and forth banter with um, with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax this past week. I thought it was really good. I thought it was interesting. Dakota's really coming out of her shell with her character. Yeah, she really is. As, as, as a heel, she's a natural heel. And it's really good. And I think they're building Raquel to be the next kind of, strong superstar in the women's division um of course they um if you heard they wwe uh, nxc they just signed um john morrison's wife the last uh was it two yes. weeks ago which was a big get. we knew she would probably go there but regardless it's still a very big get for them it's a huge yeah, yeah she's very very and talented and amazingly yeah. talented and i was a big fan of hers and however I, i'm a little confused because they had the nxc evolve show uh announced and mm -hmm. she was on the poster that is a show that's going to be a, essentially a developmental program for the developmental program well she might just be i mean look she might maybe be a guest on the show and maybe have an opponent might just do a one-time appearance kind of thing which because she draws i mean she draws yeah especially for the women's division she draws so to get people to want to tune in and watch the show maybe she has her debut on that show just to have people tune in and watch it that's what you want to get, right? You want to get eyes to watch the product. Exactly. And to, and to do that, you need to have some people on a certain poster to really get people to want to tune in and watch it. That that could be why I, I understand what you're saying. It's interesting. Listen, she's not going to Evolve. She's going to NXT. Mm -hmm. um, that's Hopefully. that's that's no, she is. That's a it's a foregone conclusion. She's she was on the poster. There. Yeah, I get. But see, you're missing what I'm saying with regards to how why she was on the poster. She was well, on the why poster. Why would she be on the poster if she's not going to be like featured because on the show? Because it's often. it's going to be a one off appearance. Because look, Is there that was confirmed? also no. I can tell you this. Look, Alistair Black was on the NXT UK poster. Was on an NXT UK poster at one point, and he fought Pack at the time. Um, you know, and it was a one off thing. It happens because it draws eyes to want to watch the show. Exactly. That's what you want to get. You want to get viewership. Is it not? <laughs> Well, there's going to be a, uh, in. a show on the network. Hey, Josh, yeah, my and, and, that's the point, and that's the point. You want people to watch it and tune in and check it out. So what did you all think about Johnny Gargano versus Kushida for the North American Championship? That match, I thought, was phenomenal. Um, amazing match. It was amazing. Very, yep. Amazing match. Right I thought that's the, wrong, the wrong person won, but it was an amazing match. Kushida showed why he's special. Yeah, he really and he, he's put somebody on his that best I think, performance. I think in due time he will get a championship opportunity. Uh, maybe they see bigger things with him than the NXT North American Championship. Maybe they see the NXT Heavyweight Championship. But look, let's be real secure. Johnny Gargano is a popular figure in NXT. He still is. The mm -hmm. merchandise sales show it. His popularity shows it. He's still drawing. I mean, he's Johnny Wrestling. He's Mr. NXT. He's essentially Mr. NXT. He is the Shawn Michaels of NXT. He that's is. essentially what that's he what is. That's what they're trying to build him as. That's exactly it. And that's why you they've compared never... it to him. They've compared him multiple times to uh, Shawn Michaels well, on the show. Uh, Sha they, well, Shawn they said he's Johnny Takeover. 
And yeah, then I they thought... compared him, like, how Shawn Michaels is uh, Mr. WrestleMania. They said that before. And I don't know if they're trying to do it or it just happened, but well, really, it, uh, it, it's definitely what they're trying to do. Before Alex goes, there's there's two guys specifically that Shawn Michaels directly works with very closely in NXT. That's Adam Cole and that's Johnny Gargano. Those are two guys he has worked with very, very closely that he has made kind of his students. And, you you, you know, you, you, you can see Johnny Gargano, I don't think should ever be on the main roster. I think he's just fine in NXT. Yeah, I, think, I agree. I, I think that's Perfect where he – there's certain yeah. guys that belong in just NXT. Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano. Tommaso Ciampa. There are certain guys that just need to stick in NXT. You can I make disagree with that a little Cole. bit. I That's think Ad, I think Adam Cole and how over he is is someone the main roster really needs. I understand, but the problem is the young fans and the kids won't understand his character because they never yeah, they saw him. They won't understand the character. Well. That's the problem. That's why the NXT I, fans I, understand it. I disagree. It. You said it before on Takedown Breakdown that the kids loved Adam Cole. I don't think they need to understand. They've got to understand Bay Bay. That's all they have to understand. Uh, but you see, that's the thing, though. Will Vince change his character up? No, that... I don't think so. If he's over, <laughs> he won't. So was Keith Lee. Keith Lee was completely over, and Vince completely ruined the character. I mean, did dude, he ruin he changed... it because uh, he wanted to, or because of the theme song? He had to change it because he wasn't allowed to use that. Anymore. Actually, me and Josh talked. Me and Josh talked about this months ago when they changed his music theme to. Oh, it was the worst. To, to generic. To generic music that sounds like it came out of SmackDown versus Raw. It sounds like SmackDown versus Raw created wrestler. I mean, that's really yeah. what it sounds like. The most generic boy. Dude, he's already on his third theme song since the main roster. The third. His third. They ch- they changed his wrestling attire. They changed everything about him. And it's so flimsy and stupid that you see something like this and you say to yourself, and Lyle, you and I have talked about this off the air, and Alex, you and I have talked about this on the air. Keith Lee was a gold mine in NXT. Oh, yeah. Dude, his t- his t shirt came out when his, his first, first in the glory his first his first, t- his first t shirt came out, and it was the number one sh- shirt on WWE shop. For yeah, it month. was. And it should have been champion longer. I agree. with you. Should have been champion longer and should have held that belt longer. I Absolutely. felt like that was a disservice to him, and it took away some of his momentum by him losing it so much and going up to the main roster. Also, um, after he won the belt, I felt like he got exposed as not being the best on the mic and being monotone, especially going up to the main roster. You that can make the kind case of exposed that. him a little bit. Um, that that promo he had right after the week after he won the title was terrible. He was monotone. He, I did not like it at all. I feel like that's a big actually uh, issue in a lot of guys right now in NXT. I thought the same thing about the promo that opened up the show this weekend, this week on Wednesday. I thought the promo was pretty bad, pretty cringe to watch. Felt forced by both guys, Roger Strong and um, Kyle O'Reilly. And I agree with you on that. It felt very weak. Yeah, I I, I think that there is a uh, um, I think that he could have been down there for a while. I think he's getting exposed on the main roster. I think that's that's his big fault. Um, go back down there and he can just get that big over big long title reign because they need a, a a face that that draws. They really don't have that. Carry Cross is over, but he's not a face. He's more of a heel. He's no, a yeah, he's also. more of a heel. He's guy. A can we He's talk about do you can we talk about the Kyle Riley Adam Cole stuff? I think it needs to be mentioned because yeah, I think it does. Uh, well, we'll uh, get, we'll get to that. I think there's a couple other matches we could definitely discuss and dissect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, we, oh we excuse me. Somebody, somebody who's been on the show for a few weeks decided to take over. Well, we're gonna be skipping a couple. <laughs> oh, of good excuse matches, me here. I didn't realize somebody took the reins of the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you Hold are on. the last person to take the reins of the show, but okay, we could go back to whatever we were doing. Thank you for cutting so, me off there. Uh, so there was the women's championship, the NXT championship match. That match should have been longer. It felt too short. It, I like how the match was going with Mercedes Martinez, Io Shirai, and Tony Storm in this triple threat. Uh, I thought what they were doing performance wise was great. Having Io Shirai climb up the, uh, the the pole structure and jump off of it, what onto Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez was a cool thing to add to the matchup. And I despite it was very the match was very entertaining. It just it needed more time. It needed more time to show who was gonna who was going to win, who was gonna walk out. And, uh, That's my dog, sorry. Woman's How dare she bark like a dog? Well, you know. 
<laughs> so Lyle, I want to ask what what I want to ask you. What are your thought? What were your thoughts on this women's triple threat? How did you think Io Shirai performed? And do you think this match ne needed to be longer? Did you think it needed more time added? Um. Well, I actually listened to the uh, uh, press conference afterwards with Triple H, and he said that they had all the time in the world. That up to twenty five minutes to uh, go, and he said that's they thought that that's what they wanted to do, and. I, I they had a box in the match and when the table gave out and I think that's definitely what caused them to shorten it. Um, I think they would have gone longer, but he said that they had as much time as they wanted to and got how long they wanted to, and uh, I was very disappointed because that's their strength. Yeah, that is the their women's strength. division, and that match I think was the weakest match of the of the card. Yeah, it and was. I was I actually predicted that match to be the best best match overall. And I was very disappointed. Disappointed. Um, I think things could have been better. I will say they made the right call with having Martinez be pinned instead of Tony Storm because now you could have Storm versus yeah. Io Shirai. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was the whole main goal of the situation. When you look at that, I think it's um, it was it was the right call, and it's unfortunate because I like Mercedes Martinez. But I think you, if you do a Shirai. Tony Storm program, it's going to flow really well. And it's going yeah, to show the diamond to the women's division. And again, you know, you like I said, you brought in Ty, you know, Taya Valkyrie, who you just signed um, from Impact. So you're adding another element to the women's division. They have a very strong women's division, and it's growing. Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez is, in, is a beast on this division now. So it's almost like they're replenishing from what they've lost the last few years. And they're, and they're trying doing, to they're, they're trying and doing a very good job of it so far. They're, yes. They're, tr think, they're they're trying to add more and develop more to their to their roster. And I think that's the uh, the best direction to go, the best way to go about it for NXT. No, absolutely. Well, like, I've said many times on the show about what NXT's biggest fault uh their biggest fault is and um it's a formula that will ne never really succeed on a professional wrestling show on TV. When you lose your top talent to go to another show every few months, that is not a formula to succeed. No, it's not. And they, they are trying to rebuild, and they had this problem years ago when they had that big... They lost like five or six guys in NXT, and they all went to the main roster. I think it was right after Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, and all those guys left, and they had nobody. And it wasn't like the same show. It took them like a year to really get built back up again. And they brought in EC3. They brought in Ricochet. They brought in some more guys. And then they went up and they were fine again because they had Gargano and then they had Ciampa carrying the reins. They had Adam Cole and they had the momentum continue going. And now they kind of who on this show besides well, like Adam Cole and and Kevin Cross and the guys who were in the main event. And the women really draw you to this product. Alex, who did we have on the show? If you, Phil, um, Phil Stamper, a couple Phil, weeks. Phil, Phil Stamper, yeah. we had on before you were here, Lyle. We had Phil Stamper on on the show a couple weeks ago, and he said the problem was when they got Ricochet and they got EC3. The same thing happened even with Austin Aries when they got Austin Aries and Shinsuke Nakamura came in. It was too many cooks in the kitchen at one time. So, therefore, mm -hmm. guys weren't getting the build that they should have got it because, okay, Austin Aries was one of the better wrestlers in the world at the time. The problem was Shinsuke Nakamura became, you know, Shinsuke Nakamura was as over as anybody. So, it's almost like NXT. Yeah. When, when he, he, when, when, and the same thing happened with EC3. They signed EC3. Then the problem was Ricochet 2. Mm -hmm. and, so, they, and Ricochet was way more over. So, you, 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 you're, you're putting. I understand what they're trying to do. NXT, you also have to remember that was when Velveteen Dream's character started building. Um, yeah, they were so hot. For it, a few it, years it was too NXT. many. There were too many guys at once that they were bringing in at one time, and it was frustrating because, you know, when you see something like that, you think, "Oh, this guy's getting signed. This woman's getting signed, and this person's getting signed." We see this all the time. AW should sign this person, and this person, and this person, and NXT should sign this guy and this guy. So then when you sign all these guys at once, it ruins the whole character of other people. I I have a huge question for you guys. With AEW starting, they pretty much took a giant chunk of the major indie talent who was available mm -hmm. in the elite. And NXT's formula for a while was them signing the big indie talent. They signed uh, Prince Devitt. 
Kevin Steen, signed Nakamura. They signed the big guys and brought them yeah. in, and that's what drove them. Now, th- who's in Ring of Honor to really be a megastar? No one. No, no one. New Japan, I think they stopped that hole of guys going, their major talent going. I think that's going to be cut off. I think they're going to be signing long, long-term deals. Uh, Jay White, a few years ago, said that he told the Elite that he was signed to a seven-year contract. But he's not going anywhere for a while. So, is that big train, that big momentum train that NXT had for a bunch of years, is it dead? Who do they I have don't... to really bring in as a mega star that, that you know of and he's going to immediately want you to come in? They don't have that name anymore. They don't have the Prince Evan. They don't have the Kevin Team. They don't have the El Generico. Well, they don't is... have the Nakamura anymore. Unless they're getting some over-the-hill guy in, and once uh, Tanahashi comes over when he, he's dead, which I never see happening because he's Tanahashi. Well, well, but I, I don't think... They have anyone to really build up anymore. I do have a point to that. There is there is one guy who's in development. He's training at the Performance Center. He's in developmental right now. His name is Alex Zane. But Alex Zane, he's I've seen him in in a lot of cool matches, even like uh, death matches and destructive matches. But I don't think it's enough. It's not enough for one guy to be able to carry NXT. I think it but needs here, here's the thing. To be more. Now, Alex Zane is he's very good, but he is not Adam Cole. No, he's, he's not, not El Generico. Mm-hmm. He is not Kevin Steen. He is not all these major, major guys that they signed. AEW took all the major guys who were not signed to WWE. Hey man, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, Cody, and they put them into their company. They don't that isn't out there anymore. No, it's not. They, it's, it's not. That is what made NXT, lo- like, that's what made them breathe. That's what made the blood flow through them, is these top guys coming in, and they don't have that. There is nobody in development that's on that level of those guys who can really keep the train going, keep that momentum that they had for years. I agree with you. I absolutely 100% and agree with you. It has if, you look, if you look past these guys who they have at the top of their card right now, who do you really care about on that pro- on that show? Who NXT? There's not one guy uh, after the top guys that they have. They're well, there all are guys that are like like. I mean, there are guys. There are guys. Guys. they're talented. Yeah, I mean, they're talented. Yeah. But who's gonna go? Oh, no, like this no, guy is on there. Like he's, no, he's, you're acting like there's nothing. You're acting like there's after nothing. The, I mean, after there's, the top guys, there is nothing. Well, you built. That's why you they have. They have guys. talent. Why, uh, they have talent. They have to build them up. But they're not going to build them up. I, I don't level. agree with that. I still think there's guys. And there's I don't guys think that they're they trying have... to build. Yeah, there yes, is. they have to build them, but they have nobody <laughs> on there that 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 give it has that draw power. Give it time. Give it time. Yeah. Very, I don't you think you they, they have patient. that right now. They don't have that you right now. Be, to, you have to be more patient. You know. Yeah, you have to be. You have to be more patient. I think you have to wait. They're in a really tough spot. Well, That's before, their problem. Because we're going to go to break in a few minutes. We do. Uh, I want. I want to get to the Kyle O'Reilly, Adam Cole stuff. Um, yeah, hundred percent. I want to talk about and, that too. And and and, you know, people were wondering was this the right call to break up the undisputed era? I will tell you this. Uh, for those that never saw this, Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole had one of the biggest rivalries in Ring of Honor. Um, their rivalry was so big they actually had a ring of. They actually wrestled for the Ring of Honor World Championship at Wrestle Kingdom. In one of their matches. Why are you looking confused, Lyle? I, I just had something pop up on my iPad and I was trying to read it because I had my glasses off. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I never, no, I didn't no, know. About you. Okay. I was like, no, why but, is this person contacting yeah, me? Yeah, no. It's, um, <laughs> but, um, with Ring of, they had their wrestle, their rivalry was so big. They wrestled at Wrestle Kingdom for the Ring of Honor World Championship at one point. Yep. Um, this is a big rivalry that's going to set the tone. I mean, Obviously, you look at it, you think of Randy Orton and Evolution, stuff like that, and this is what it's come to fruition with. And I think it's going to be a great rivalry. This is something that's going to be very special. I, you can make the case, and I've seen this comparison, this could be like Organo Champa, if not I better. Well, yeah. if, not, if not better. Because the difference is these, these two have actually had a rivalry before in Ring of Honor where they have the chemistry, where they can really thrive and make it work and be special. But now the question is, too, where does Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish lie in this whole rivalry? And the unfortunate thing is I think they've tried to make Red Dragon work in NXT. And I have said this before. They were one of my top tag teams in the world. 
months mm-hmm. ago. The, but the problem is, I think they still are. Bobby Fish just cannot stay healthy since he's got to NXT. He, he just can't no. stay healthy, and it's been a killer, and it's stopped the momentum. And I think at this point, Adam Cole is weird as a face. He's not a face. I agree. He's, a, he's a heel. Yeah, he is. He's, he's a, cocky, a natural. He's a cocky heel. guy who's a, he's a heel, um, and that's that's the, where he will fit better. And you're 100 percent correct with that. Josh, Somebody, I, write that down. Somebody write that down. <laughs> I Put do, that in my journal. <laughs> I do have to agree with you on that. I feel like oh, I'm two for two. Look at this. I'm really right into my journal today. I feel. <laughs> hey, I'm taking it back. I don't agree anymore. <laughs> I feel like uh, with uh, with making Adam Cole a heel is much better off than making him a face because with when he's a face, he doesn't have that much connection. He doesn't have that much pull with the fans. And I've kind of seen that. We've seen that a lot in the, the past couple weeks and months, where where they've just ma- uh, mainly focused on him and the undisputed era as a group. But now that they're going this direction, where they're going, where they're having Adam Adam Cole turn on the undisputed era, I think it's going to beneficially help him out and really also help out Kyle O'Reilly in this in this angle. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, you look at it like this. Adam Cole doesn't need to be a face to be cheered for. Adam Cole is no, Adam Cole. There's certain guys that don't need to be faces. If they're natural heels, it's going to flow. It's going to work. Look, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin has talked about it many times. When he was a heel later on, the fans were still cheering for him when he joined with Vince McMahon. Okay. Some certain guy, you know, and, and they tried to make it work as a heel and for the fans to boo him. It just – they didn't want to boo him. That's that's what it really comes down to is you don't need certain guys to, to really thrive off as a face to make the fans cheer for you. Adam Cole is going to get the T-shirts, the Bay Bay thing. He's going to get all that. It doesn't really make a difference. This is more also to help develop Kyle O'Reilly because Kyle O'Reilly's had some really epic matches with Finn Balor the last few months. And Kyle O'Reilly is a very – we know him as a tag team wrestler. He is an epic singles wrestler. Oh, yeah. And yes, that's something he's that he's good. really he's going to show. Yes. Yeah. And if you see him in PWG, you know. Yeah, uh-huh. and, and, and that's going to show in this in this business. I actually wanted to see something. The match he had with Finn Balor where he, uh, he broke Finn which Balor's one? jaw. <laughs> yeah, really, which one, was... Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Both were great. The one at uh, New Year's Evil where he broke his okay. jaw. Yeah. That that was by far the best match I've seen Kyle O'Reilly compete in against Finn Balor by far. And it could go thirty minutes. He could go 20, 30 minutes. Both of those guys can. I mean, you saw Adam Cole out loud. You and I were there for mm-hmm. at Takeover New York. He could go for that match was probably about I would say forty five minute match. That was with, with Johnny hour. Gargano. It might have been close to an hour. So Adam yeah, Cole could cle- he, he could he could clearly go. Kyle O'Reilly mm-hmm. can clearly go. Mm-hmm. You, you you can draw this out to make it. You could do Iron Man matches. You could do different matches with these two and make it an epic robbery. Because, look, when, when Triple H turned on Randy Orton back in the uh, Ruthless Aggression era, that was an epic robbery with the two of them. Yeah, it was. And, and, and the amazing thing is the robbery continued all these years later. And it flowed years later. I this is qu- something you question. could do. It, w- imagine if they were doing – the Ciampa Organo storyline mm-hmm. on live TV. The mm-hmm. one when when every time Ciampa came out, no music, the big FU chant. Imagine if that was on TV. And that was what the crowd was doing every single week. That would have been must-see TV. Now, that would have been amazing. I mean, I just, I miss Ciampa as a heel, period. Oh, I uh, loved him as a heel. Dude, he's you know how much I loved him. He used to yell at a grandma. It was, it, was awesome. <laughs> it was great. It was the best. All right, guys. We're going to go to break. Uh, but first of all, I want to apologize to the fans for coming on late. Uh, and I also want to I want to apologize to the fans for, you know, we were supposed to have a special guest on today. And, well, listen, you make do what you can, what you have, you know. As they say, you make chicken salad. You know, you, you're trying to make chicken bleep out of chicken salad. You know what I mean? Also, yeah. Also, I apologize for butchering the intro. <laughs> oh, so God. good, man. You found out 10 minutes beforehand that you had to do it. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, Alex, listen, dude, you had to. I didn't know if I was going to make it to the show, but um, <laughs> um, I will tell you this. First off, before we go to break, we do want to thank the fans for um, being with us every Saturday. Going to Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock is going to be so much better for the show. It's going to make mm-hmm. the show even more two hours. Um, and again, 
uh, I don't know if Alex explained it. To, how do you how you download our app and everything like that? You just yep, you did. If you have an Apple, you have an Apple in, iPhone. If you, or type in, if you have an iPhone, you type in WWSRN. Android, you go to the Google Play Store. You type in Worldwide exactly. Sports. And our Worldwide Sports Radio is our professionally done website. And Alex, did you mention our brand new website that we yes, have off the mat? Awesome. Alex, uh, kudos to you, Alex. Alex completely made that website from scratch. Yeah, that's a gorgeous website. Go check it out. It's phenomenal stuff. It's really good. And we're just looking forward to, um, you know, we are looking forward to moving to Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock starting March the 2nd. Again, we will be off next week. We will not have a show um, because we will be preparing to go for our brand new time slot. Um, but we do have a guest. That is coming on March the second, correct, Alex? Yes, we do, and it is uh, MLW's backstage reporter and uh, Ambi owner Alicia too. So you're you're gonna want to tune in for that. That's awesome. That's a great get for us. Great she's, she's, she's really good to have. Um, if you see her Twitter page and everything like that, she's really informative. Oh yes, yeah, really business. Um, so it's good stuff. All right. So when we come back, um. We're, we're, we're going to dive into AEW. There's a lot to digest about it. With the John Moxie, Kenny Omega, uh, the, the the barbed wire explosion match, whatever it's called. Um, I had on my Twitter page to show you what the match looks like. Um, and it's up. And if you haven't checked out the match, go see it. It's going to be interesting. I'm just curious about the concept. And then there was another thing that was talked about. Cody Rhodes had a statement to say. What was it? And which wrestling company did it involve? We'll talk all about that when we come back here on Off The Mat on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Of course my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat, aren't there? Rear-facing forward facing i think i have it right car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13 are your children in the right car seat for their age and size don't think you know know you know go to safercar.gov slash the right seat i know my child's in the right car seat or else i wouldn't get in the driver's seat Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You don't usually get a stock tip from a 16-year-old, but I'm here to tell you about a different kind of stock. It's called Better Futures, a stock for social change that's not about making money. Instead, you invest to help students like me go to college. This is beyond a simple donation. It's the opportunity for America to invest in its kids and take an active stake in the future of the country. The return on your investment isn't money. What you get back is knowing you protected our potential. So one day that potential can grow up to become surgeons and architects, executives and engineers. People who can change the future just by being a part of it. My name is Alicia and I'm your dividend. Invest in better futures with UNCF. Visit uncf.org slash invest. A mind is a terrible thing to waste but a wonderful thing to invest in. A public service announcement brought to you by UNCF and the Ad Council. This is Namdi Asamoa. I play football for the Philadelphia Eagles, but what I do off the field with United Way might be more important. I'm a volunteer tutor and mentor. Why? Because over a million kids a year drop out of school, and that's not okay. It takes 12 years to create a graduate, but it takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between a child becoming one or the other could be me, or it could be you. Studies show that if we get to these kids earlier, their chances are better. And kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. So join me in United Way. Suit up and take the pledge. Become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor. Because when a child succeeds, we all succeed. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Take the pledge at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way, the Ad Council, and the National Football League. They'll challenge your authority. 
They'll try to break your will. They'll push you to the edge of your sanity. Because that's what kids do. But this car is your territory, not theirs. Defend it. Who makes the payments? Who cleans it? Who drives it? You do. That's who. And in here, your word is law. So when you say you won't move until everyone's buckled up, you won't budge an inch. Until you hear that click. Never give up. Until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. For more information, visit safercar.gov slash kids buckle up. Let's go inside the mind of a 10-year-old. I should have worn those earrings today. I like those earrings. Gabby has those awesome earrings. I need to ask her where she got those, but that's just what she would want me to do. I'll have Michaela ask her for me. Buckle up, Sarah. Yeah, but then Michaela will be like, why don't you just ask her yourself? That's just like Michaela. Sarah, buckle up. Michaela's such a great name. I wish I was called Michaela. There's like a dozen Sarahs in my class. Hey, we're not hitting the road until you buckle up, honey. Oh, yeah. Seatbelt. I forget sometimes because my brain is like busy, you know? I wonder if there's pizza at school today. Sometimes it can be tough to get through to your kids, but it's not impossible. Always make sure they're wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Remember, you have the keys, you have the power. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. It, it is the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Everybody's got a price. Rest in peace. Welcome back to Off the Mat with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our last Saturday episode of Off the Mat here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, the only wrestling show here on the network. And we had a lot to digest about with NXT the first half. So this half we're going to pretty much do, it's going to be a lot of AEW. There's a lot to talk about, a lot to digest, a lot to get into. And, of course, let's... We need to start with the obvious, as we heard the announcement of the Kenny Omega, John Moxley, the it's a barbed wire, exploding barbed wire uh, death, death match. match. Yep. So that was the answer. And for those that follow me on Twitter, I posted a link on YouTube of what the match is going to look like. Pretty much how it goes is this. With the barbed wire, there's going to be like little explosion kind of things, like firecrackery. Uh, little things that pop off if you hit the barbed wire. Now, I don't know if AEW is going to do it that way. They might do it a different way. Uh, I'm going to get your guys' opinion on it first off. Uh, Lyle, I'll start with you. What is your thoughts on this match? And Do you think AEW will do it the same way that uh, the old matches used to look like? I, I, I do. I, don't, I can't really think of another way they could do it. Um, I think they'll very much do it that same way. Um, Kenny is a wrestler who comes from Japan. And he, this is something that I, I think he wants to do. If he's going to do it, he's going to do it that way. I think it will be a disservice to Japanese wrestling. And I don't think Kenny Omega would do that. It's a legendary match in Japan. And I, I think it'll be the obvious way that we all know this match to be. It's the first time. It's ever happening in the United States, and I think it's going to be absolutely insane. Kenny Omega and John Moxley are two guys who I think are perfect for the first time for this to happen in the U.S. Alex, your thoughts on it? So I think it's actually a good idea. I'm really excited to see a barbed wire match like this because it's never been done in AEW before. This will be their first time doing it in AEW. They have, however, like Lyle said, they've done it in Japan. They've done it in other promotions. And it's going to be interesting because John Moxley and Kenny Omega are two guys that have really changed this industry 
and balance this industry out. And it's going to be a physical matchup. It's going to be one of those matches that are not for the faint hearted. And you, it's going to be a match where you have to be constantly looking over your shoulder all the time because you got to be aware. And with the barbed wire, the exploding and everything, it, AEW needs to be cautious with how they do this match because if they're not careful with their performers, they could easily get e easily get hurt by a firecracker or something like that. So they just have to be watchful and weary of that. I agree with you, and I think this is interesting because you know, ever since uh, Kenny Omega has come over to AEW, he's been in these types of matches, which you never saw when he was in Japan in these crazy matches. Uh, that he, I mean, he did, he did, he did some stuff. In DDT wrestling, he did, yeah. Okay, well, thank you for correcting. Um, so he did do, so he did do some stuff. I did not know. I apologize. Um, it's all good. Um, but not to the extent I feel like what we're seeing. I mean, you're talking about a barbed wire exploding death match. That's something that, and again, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Uh, Terry Funk is in the match. I forget the other guy he wrestled, the Japan wrestler that he wrestles. Um, Ao, I think Anodi. Onida. Onida. So. And Onita was in a couple of them, uh, so he was yes, basically the spokes, he was he was the spokesperson, kind of the representative of that match. And you look at the whole thing in general; it's kind of interesting when you see how this match is going to go. I mean, it's serious. It seriously seems like AEW is taking these old. Back in the day matches, you see what the War Games match that they want to do with Blood and Guts. You're seeing it with the death match. You're seeing different things. And it's really an interesting concept that they're taking older types of matches and bringing them here. And I think it's creative. It's different. Now, Moxley can handle this. John Moxley has done these matches over and over again. Oh, yeah. He's, he's something I'm not worried about. Fine. You know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. I'm excited to see how creative they get with this. I mean, because you have to remember, there's also the so the one that I posted is is, is the time bomb match, um, yeah, which is included at, at. So I don't know if you. I want to tell the story quick. If you don't know this about uh, Inodi, so Terry Funk in the match was knocked out, uh, and what happens is when the timer goes off, uh, the ring explodes. Not like the ring like explodes, but like everything comes up and the ring kind of goes down, and Inodi saw that Terry Funk was not getting up, and he, you know, Terry Funk was one of his trainers. So Anodi saw that as he was trying to get Funk out of the ring. He knew he wasn't going to make it at time. He actually covered his body over Terry Funk when the explosion went off so that nothing would happen to Terry Funk. So if you see how that is done at the end of the match, and you see like the four barrels of explosions come up, and it's really an insane concept when you think about that. I mean, look, you're talking ECW esh. When you see something like this, which is interesting because ECW never even did something like this, which is crazy to yeah. think about, which is insane to think about. I mean, you know, you would think New Jack would do something stupid like this, uh, but because uh, he's not even a wrestler, he's just a maniac. That's just. But, and then we had that, uh, the stuff with Sting. So we saw Brian Cage powerbomb Sting um, on the floor. And that concerned me a little bit when I saw that bump that he took. Because this is a guy who's six, he's 61 years old coming off spinal stenosis. It's, you, you know, Lisha was a little more gentle than um, he was. Well, it came out that Tony Khan actually uh, had Sting wearing padding. And the part of the ring that he got power, power bombed onto had padding under it. Oh, good. Okay. So there was, he was safe. He wasn't going to be getting hurt, um, which I, I, I think is the right way to do it. Uh, from what I've heard, it was Sting's idea to do the. Okay. Power bomb. He wanted to take the bomb. Okay. I would imagine it um, was his idea. So, I, I I was originally worried too, but they wanted to look look they wanted to look that way. But they wanted it I, to I, look I, like he got hurt. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, but I just thought they did it was, a good job. Yeah, they did. They really did. And then you had, um, I, I know we talked about the Young Bucks crowd and powerful match. Uh, Alex, I'll start with you first because I know Lyle has a lot to say on it with that match. Was it the right call? Um, I thought this was the right call to have Santana and Ortiz take on the Young Bucks in the match. I thought it was a smart tactic from AEW, and it was a great match. It was back and forth. Uh, the Young Bucks were able to match their moves with Santana and Ortiz, and it was perfect how, how they were executing these moves on each other. And 
I, I, it was a great matchup and one of the probably one of the best ma matches on AEW this week. But was the decision the right call for the Young Bucks to win? For the Young Bucks to win, I, I, I would say no, because really I wanted to see Santana and Ortiz walk away at the titles. Because if you think about it, the Young Bucks have already held the titles for a long time. So I, I think it's time to kind of give somebody else the reins and give them a chance to run with it and see what direction they go. Lyle, your thoughts? Um, I was really disappointed by what they did by not having Proud and Powerful win. Um, I would have preferred to have the Good Brothers come out, cause a distraction, mm -hmm. Proud and Powerful wins, and then you have Young Bucks versus Good Brothers at uh, Revolution, Revolution, and you have uh, Proud and Powerful versus Jericho and MJF yep. for the tag titles, and you continue the storyline of the Inner Circle imploding. I think both of those two matches have phenomenal storytelling and are, would have been very, very good to watch. I wish they would have done it. They did not. Um, there are rumors that Chris Jericho wants to take time off. So the rumor is that they're going to be having Sammy Guevara come out and it's going to swerve and he's going to turn on Chris, not MJF. And then it's going to be MJF taking you over the inner circle. I, I would prefer an inner circle implosion. That's what that I said. I think I, I think I said that last week. I said that there was reports that Jericho wants to take time off, which is why they'll do Jericho getting turned on and giving him some time off. I know he has stuff with Fozzie and everything like that also that he wants to do um, and, also, speaking of Sammy Guevara, apparently he was supposed to go into Impact and doing what uh, the rumor is that he's going to be doing what Taurus was, did in Impact and uh, he's going to be putting over Ace Austin. But that is... he Apparently he didn't like that and didn't want to get, take the pin, so he chose to stay home. And he asked you proposed to do other ideas. Um, but that's what the rumor is going on about that. I can't confirm. But I, and I have no idea. I'm just going by what I see people reporting. But uh, it, it's very interesting going on with what's going on with Sammy Guevara because there are rumors that f from Fightful that the there was uh, some bad blood between the two promotions for him not wanting to take the pinfall and not wanting to do the creative ideas. But like, if you're Sammy Guevara, would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to go to another company and made look bad. Like I don't blame him for wanting to do that. Um, if that is actually what happened, it's all speculation. But I mean, I think you have to look at it this way, though. At the same time, I I, I agree with Lyle. If you're Sammy Guevara, you don't want to do that. But also at the same time, how much has Impact also given AEW so far? Yeah, they have. They've the given them. I've, they, I've been thinking about that. Given, they've given them a lot, and I think it's only fair. But that it, they, Impact gets something. I feel they like got not to have Kenny anything. Omega on their program for a long time. That is huge. Yes, I agree. And, and Impact is different. They I think there, there could have been a, a way to make this work. There could have been a way to make this work. I don't think the the uh, partnership is in jeopardy. They have they, no. It's not. They tape their. It's not. They have uh, different ways to tape their shows than AEW does. They tape their shows in giant chunks, uh, which is why Kenny Omega was able to be on it. But and why the Good Brothers are able to be on AEW every week, so I'm not really worried about it. But Alex, what say you in regards to the whole thing with um, Sammy Guevara and Impact, and if it deteriorates the relationship? Because Lyle and I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to either. I feel like with Sam with Sammy Guevara going over to Impact, it opens the door to more more ideas, more possibilities for impact to bring over their guys to AEW and have this partnership go on and see what they can do with it because if you do that and you oh, you keep working with if AEW keeps working with impact uh there there's many different things they can go go do with that they could have orange cassidy go over to AEW mm -hmm. uh, go over to impact i mean and take on somebody from the impact roster like Ken Shamrock for example yeah, I mean, you can just, uh, I you don't just, want that. No. no. Or, uh, no or, Shamrock. He looks like a drunk guy who doesn't want to leave the bar or, after, uh, or, after uh, uh, 
Let's call. Hold on, Lyle. Let Alex finish. Let him finish. Mm-hmm. Or you could just have him take on the – I forget what this guy's name. I've seen him perform so many times on Impact. I'm trying to remember. But he he's one of the top guys. He's not been that good. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's one of the top guys on Impact right now. Uh, I was busting a chance. Is, 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 is it Ethan Page? Yeah, I would want to see him face Ethan Page, Orange Cassidy. Like Ethan. Yeah, Orange if you, Cassidy what, if, what if you did Ethan? What if you did Orange Cassidy versus Ethan Page as like the ninja? I, I know. I think Ethan Page contract was up and he left. Or uh, you have, if Cass- I remember correctly, Cassidy take on uh, Suicide. Hey, you could do things like that. There's creativity. That'd be interesting. You could always do That'd things like that. Um, and then of course you heard the news about even Wait, no. Co- what about Shark Boy? Oh, I want to see Orange no. Cassidy versus no, Shark Boy. Shark Wait a second, hold on. You don't want to see you don't want to see Ken Shamrock versus Orange Cassidy, but you want to see Shark Boy versus Orange Cassidy. It was a joke. It was a no, joke. I don't want to see Shark joke. Boy at all. No, no, he go away forever. But like, why don't you why don't you do it, Curry Man funny. while you're at it? Why don't you have Curry Man go up against Orange Cassidy while you're at it? <laughs> you get no ideas, you know? Why don't you do that? So, and then of course you heard the news that you know even Okada could be with AEW and Impact soon. So we'll see how that goes going forward, which will be phenomenal. I think we'll see. But Please, we gotta, we're getting we're running out of time, so we do have to get into the story. Cody Rhodes made the statement that he doesn't see why WWE and AEW can't have a partnership together, and why he thinks it would be work. It would work. It'd be successful. So, Lyle, I'll start with you on this one. Well, I mean, look, we all know it's not going to happen because WWE never will happen. Ne- never going to happen. But I understand what Cody is saying. He's right. Uh, you know, why can't all promotions just work together and make the business yeah, as either. strong as it's ever been? Mm-hmm. You know, I-, I-, I get what he's trying to think about that. If you bring NXT and AEW together, oh, oh, my God. I mean, that would break barriers in regards to wrestling. Well, so, wait. Hold on. Wait, we're going to talk about that for a second. You could then have Adam Cole. To a storyline with Kenny oh, Omega, enough where, with this already. You're where he, he was killed because that is not the real Adam Cole. That is his evil twin brother pretending oh, to be Adam Cole. Oh Adam God. Cole is dead. Yes, you all I know, know the fact on that Adam B- Cole is BTE, not alive anymore. Yes, Adam Cole died on BTE. We know the whole thing. He is dead. Adam Cole is dead. Okay, Josh? Yeah, he's dead. Okay, sure. The merchandise doesn't say it, but he's dead, all right. <laughs> it's not Adam Cole. It's his evil twin brother. He changed his name, okay? Yeah, what's his name? Aaron Cole? Because <laughs> the shirt says Adam. It's, it's Cole Aaron. It's Aaron. Okay. Um, then he changed his name legally to Adam. Okay. Lyle, we all what know. Your, Lyle, what are your th- <laughs> with what Cody said? Do you agree or disagree with it? Um, I agree. I don't see a reason why they can't, but we all know it won't. Um, I think Cody is only saying it because Triple H should say he has no problem working with a promotion if it's best if it can help the company. Uh, Okada said he they wanted to work with. Eight, uh, WWE also. So I, I think he's going along with that. Th- their own talent said they wanted to do promotions, and I thought it was good for professional wrestling. I think it's going to, I think it would be a great thing if they did it. It would open up a lot of possibilities. Uh, I, I think Cody have... knows, though, that it won't be able to happen, but he's doing, doing the PR move and saying that he wants it to. Alex, go for it, man. I have the quote in front of me. He says there's no reason that there couldn't be a potential WWE crossover one day. And I don't mean that's a thing that's being discussed or happening, but none of those rules that exist for, for other places f- for us. Wrestling is really the, in, uh, the, the, this wrestling is really the universal industry. And he suggested that in order for both companies to work together, they would need genuine trust. And I, I agree with that. I think that trust needs to be built. It needs to, they have to have a good connection with each other. And I think the way that that would work was the, the, the way that would work, that would work is to have Vince McMahon sit down with Cody Rhodes and talk to each other and be open to ideas Wednesday night war, not the main thing we have to do for fans is to, is to the rest of the run is to keep, he wants to have the company around forever and keep it fresh. So I do agree with that. I mean, it's look, you're seeing AEW impact new Japan and triple a and NWA all working together um, and collaborating together. And, And it's like, who's left out of the, uh, uh, who's left at the altar and it's WWE. All these companies are working together to build this into a big brand. 
Beast. And um, WWE is just – hold on. WWE is just to the point where they're so stubborn they don't want to work with anybody, period. And it's kind of well, ridiculous. I, I think WWE is uh, – they're trying to protect their, their company. I think what happened with – they had the, the partnership with ECW, but ECW wasn't on a, a cable program at the time. So, so it really didn't hurt them. And they never had – a partnership with a major company before. If you look at what ha- with WCW, I think they became so afraid that it, that it could hurt them and put them out of business when it looked like that for a while, over a year. I think it's more Vince is afraid. I think that's why they put uh, NXT on Wednesdays also. But if you really think back about it, um, to go back to what Alex said when he said that Vince and Cody would have to talk, they have spoken before recently since AEW became a thing because, remember, Cody spoke to him to get his name. He made the agreement yes. to give him to give up all those trademarks that he stole in order to get Cody Rhodes' trademark. So they have spoken, and I think they definitely can. Um, It, it would be... Uh, I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. I would I love agree. to say it, but... You know, no, I, would... I agree. Um... So let's get let's get to our finishing move right now. Lyle, go for it first. Oh, what is my finishing move? Ooh. Come back to me. Okay, fine. Alex, go. So my finishing this move. This guy, is... man, this guy. <laughs> so my <laughs> finishing move is actually Hogan's hangout finally opened on Clearwater Beach after months of just uh, renovation and being boarded up. Because every time I walked by it, it was it, it looks like they were still working on it. But now it's finally open. I'm I'm very intrigued, very interested to see how it turned out. And they actually they actually do live music there, and they're showing Elimination Chamber there tomorrow. So maybe maybe I'll go over there and watch. Oh, I forgot Elimination Chamber was tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have. <laughs> oh man! All right, I'll do my finishing move. My finishing move is this in regards to. Uh, with the partnership and stuff with WWE, I think it's best for everybody's uh, business to try to work together in this brand because wrestling right now as a whole is doing very mm-hmm. meh. And I think if you mesh everything together, it could be, it could go so far and it could be a long way. And I think that's something WWE needs to consider and they won't do it. It's unfortunate, but we'll see. Lyle. I want to talk about something that has been bothering me for, since Dynamite it's a lot of things on that you. Oh, I, it's, it's a many. It's a list of one thousand and four. Oh, um, great! If you catch the reference, it's, it's, it's at the Chris Jericho list. <laughs> yes, it is. Very good, Josh. Thank you. Um, for some reason, there are a lot of WWE fans out there who will give every excuse for storylines that happen on their show to try and explain it and say why it makes sense. But then Kenny Omega ha- is doing the storyline with Moxley, and the storyline for why he, they're doing the, this match that they're doing is that a regular match won't be enough for Kenny Omega to get rid of John Moxley. He doesn't think that would do the job. He wants to go the next step further and have this match to end him. That makes sense. That is something you could understand. And I think that they are – it's not right, and that has to stop in professional wrestling where you are giving excuses for the company you follow and then making criticism for other companies when you're contradicting and being a hypocrite. Now, WWE fans like to say a lot that, oh, AEW fans are terrible, they are awful, but what, what is so bad about them? That they enjoy the product they watch? Because that's the biggest criticism I see. That they attack them because they enjoy the product. Well, why can't WWE everybody fans, just enjoy everybody's shows? That's what I don't understand. Exactly. Why can't WWE just fans, show? they will attack every single wrestling product and but make it, every single but, excuse for their own show. And even if you don't like the product, you just don't watch it. And so, what I can't stand about that type of fanboy is that it's just. It's terrible. I think it's a terrible thing for professional wrestling. And I think the horrible thing for professional wrestling is not that it's not AEW. It's not New Japan fans. It's not Ring of Honor fans. It's not NFC fans. It's WWE 
diehard fans that hate everything else. Because those are the ones that always cause the problems. They talk bad about everybody else, every other company. The other reason why the other fan bases hate WWE, it, they need to learn how to actually be a fan before they can talk bad about other fan bases. Exactly. 100%. All, right. All right. Well, that's it for us today. Uh, before we go, don't forget, uh, this is our this was our last Saturday show. We are officially moving Tuesday nights from mm-hmm. 8 to 10 p.m. starting March the 2nd. So Saturdays are no more. Tuesdays are the new way to get a hold of us. Check us out on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We're growing every day. Check out our app. Our app is free. Our articles, show schedules, different clips of the shows. You can re-listen to the shows if you missed it. Check it all out. All you have to do is if you have an iPhone, just type in WWSRN. And if you have an Android, go to the Google Play Store and type in Worldwide Sports. Check us out on WorldWideSportsRadio.com. And don't forget our Twitter handles. They are below on the ticker that you can check all of us out on there. And Alex also created a website. What's what's the what's the uh, title for the website? It's off the mat WWSRN.com. Beautiful. Off the mat WWSRN.com. You can check us out on there too. So much going on with the product. And don't forget there's other kinds of shows you can watch and listen to on the network with all different sports and mm-hmm. funny shows and comedy. Don't forget to check us out on 103.9 FM um, on LI News Radio. We're on from 7 to 9 p.m. Myself and Errol Marks. Unless the New York Islanders home games are on, then we are on after the Islander home games, like tonight, for example. So we will be on later tonight. Probably, I would say, around 10, 15, 10, 30. So check us out there. Great show, as always. Good night tonight. What happened? They're not home. Oh, well, Errol said they were home, so. No, they're in Pittsburgh. Oh, well, Errol said they were home, so take it up with him. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for the correction. Uh, oh, it should be a, on at seven, right? You, yeah, you're such a no, you're such a narp. You're really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Why can't, That's you know, my job. Uh, your your job will be Alex boot you off the stream yard. You know. <laughs> um, you know. So check us I out for you. sure. Do it, Alex. <laughs> he'll do it if I told him to do it. He'll do it. <laughs> Uh, check us out again. Again, we go Tuesday night starting at 8 o'clock. No show next week. So, again, for Lyle Gillen, for Alex Lowe's, I'm Josh Oberg. Have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy. Enjoy Elimination, enjoy Elimination Chamber, Chamber tomorrow. And enjoy watching AEW and, and NXT and everything you watch. Take everybody. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye-bye now. <laughs>